Hey, it's Tom, and today I'm going to talk about technologies that are worth learning or at least watching in upcoming year. It's all, of course, from a perspective of a mobile developer. And this video will be separated into two sections. The first part will be a perspective of a mobile developer working in a medium or a big company. And the second part will be a perspective of an indie developer, freelancer, uh, or someone working in a startup. So let's jump to the details. Okay, let's start with developers working in a medium or big companies. So if you're working in a medium or big company, those companies still have a lot of time, money and resources available to, to be put into developing native apps. And they will be developing native apps uh, probably forever or at least for a long time since now. So if you're not going to switch to uh, other job like a freelancer or you're not going to switch into a startup, it's still worth to polish your skills in native development, in Swift development or Kotlin development. It's still worth to put your efforts to learn more about those platforms to become better native developer. And there's a big shortage of native developers, especially in those big companies. And you don't have to travel to Silicon Valley to, to work in a big company using uh, Swift or Kotlin to write native apps. Uh, you can do it in different places uh, around the world. So uh, it doesn't really matter if you live in US or in, in Europe or in any other country uh, around the world. And so if you're still going to work in a medium or big company, I would stick to the platform I'm working currently on, iOS or Android, uh, and would try just to learn more, become better developer. Uh, if you're working uh, an, an, as an iOS developer and you're writing in Swift, I can recommend you uh, to start using SwiftUI. If you're not using that yet, then it's probably a very good time to start using that, even uh, in, in projects that you're doing in your free time. And the second thing to learn or at least read about is Mac Catalyst, which allows you to port your apps from iPad to Mac App Store. Uh, and Taking into account that Mac App Store is not as crowded as iOS App Store, it might be a good time to uh, publish your app, become recognized, uh, become popular and have uh, an app which will be maybe popular. There are really not so many good apps and not so many good games in Mac App Store. So it's definitely worth to take a look into that. Uh, the thing that I would not recommend you uh, if you already know Swift and you're not a machine learning engineer or you have no knowledge about machine learning is to start learning machine learning <laughs> uh, using Swift because there are not so many good resources to learn about ma machine learning and uh, you will be only sticked to a TensorFlow framework which is very popular it's probably the most popular machine learning f framework but uh, there are also others and uh, if you are going to switch into machine learning world uh, it's definitely worth to, to just learn Python and then you will be able to uh, at first learn from many resources and the second thing is that you will be able to uh, switch into other frameworks like PyTorch, Keras and you can also st still use TensorFlow. So that's something I would not recommend. If you are going to learn machine learning, just learn Python. You don't have to be a master in Python. You just need basic skills. Uh, most things you are going to learn is math. And the same with Kotlin. If, if you are uh, an Android developer, uh, you can still polish your skills. Try to, le to learn writing on a different platforms like uh, Google Home, uh, there are so many Android platforms and the thing I would not recommend you to, to try is to try to learn data science using Kotlin. Uh, there is a, a KNumPy, so uh, it's Kotlin bindings for NumPy, probably one of the most popular uh, libraries used in data science, uh, but still the same case as in, in my machine learning. Kotlin and Swift are not very popular, probably not popular at all uh, in uh, data science, data engineering and machine learning world. 
and there are not many good resources there are probably no good resources to learn data science or machine learning uh, using Swift or Kotlin so if you are going to learn something about data science or data engineering once again just learn basics of Python and there are tons of resources free resources that you that you can use to learn the basics uh, the more so sophisticated things and still there are a lot of people who will be able to help you while learning data science or machine learning but still using Python not Kotlin or uh, Swift so those are those things that I would not re recommend to uh, learn uh, while being a mobile de developer and uh, the good case might be also uh, the recent uh, uh, case with IBM uh, Kitura uh, the server-side uh, framework written in Swift which was great it, it is still great uh, but IBM abandoned that they put a lot of effort a lot of money to make it popular it didn't happen and Recently, they just said, okay, we are leaving this ship. And honestly, it can also happen with Vapor, uh, which is other server-side frame framework written in Swift. Swift. Swift is great language, but um, maybe not for server-side development. Okay, so we can finish this part and we can switch to the other one. Okay, so we are in the second part. So this is a perspective of a mobile developer working as a freelancer, as an indie dev, or just working in a startup. So a small community of people uh, focused on one project. So I think that there are two ways uh, in upcoming year uh, that are worth uh, following, and, but it's still worth to just choose one of them and become probably uh, a master. So the first one uh, is backend development. So, but I'm, I'm not talking about writing a code in uh, Node.js, in Django, uh, or any other uh, dedicated server-side framework. But I'm going to talk about serverless. So, currently we have many abilities like AWS Lambda, uh, Google Cloud Functions, Azure Functions. And I had chance this year uh, to, to work uh, in a project in which we wrote a whole chat uh, based only on Firebase and it's it's very rich chat uh, which support messages videos we were using the Google storage and there was no need to engage a backend developer into this project uh, because uh, it was so easy that even mobile de developers uh, who didn't have any uh, experience with backend de development were able to write the, the simple Google Cloud functions uh, either in JavaScript or Python and just run them just de deploy them using terminal and they were starting uh, working like that which was great and the idea behind the serverless is that you don't have to be a backend developer to write a backend even sophisticated backend for your app so Either you're, if you are working on, an, on, on your own project, like as an indie de developer, uh, or you're just writing something uh, in your free time, as a, because you're, writing, you're working as a freelancer or working in a startup, you are able to develop a simple or even sophisticated server-side logic within a couple hours, if you only know Python or, or JavaScript or Go. Uh, if you know JavaScript and, uh, or Python, you are able to work on all those platforms. So AWS Lambda, Google Cloud Functions or Azure Functions. Uh, if you know Go, uh, you are only able to write code in uh, AWS Lambda and Google Cloud Functions. Uh, which are, those two are probably the most popular. Uh, okay, so that was the backend. And now let's switch to the frontend. So, uh, if you are working in, in, in a small company or you're an indie de developer working on your own app, uh, sometimes it's, it's really worth to save your time or build at least MVP uh, for both platforms at, at once. And I see that a lot of companies are going to uh, use this case. 
Uh, that's why uh, the multi-platform technologies uh, are growing so fast. Recently, especially Flutter. Uh, I noticed that uh, popularity of Flutter in Google Trends is uh, now a lot bigger than popularity of Swift and iOS platform and it's still growing. The popularity of Swift is decreasing and it's, it's still it's, 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 it's really, I believe, worth to uh, learn Flutter right now because you're getting the native efficiency of app, the native speed, uh, the native feel and look, and you're able to write for, for both platforms at once. Uh, there's also support for web development. It's still in, on, on early stage, but, but yeah, still, three platforms at once, at some point, it, it will work, I, I believe. And there are at least a couple popular Flutter-based apps. Uh, and that's, that's something I, th I believe you should at least read about or just try using one of your free weekends. You can just sit and read some do documentation, write some, some code and see how it's working. Uh, I think that this technology is really worth watching. And if you have a, a little bit more free time than uh, others, it's also worth to learn that. The second thing in, in, in front-end and in multi-platform development uh, is using JavaScript. And there are currently two ways to build uh, uh, mobile apps or so-called apps. Uh, the first one is the React Native, which is, I feel like it's a little bit decreasing right, right now, probably because of Flutter. Uh, and secondly, maybe because the, the, the decreasing popularity of mobile apps. Because most of people just got used to recently uh, open the web apps and uh, they are able to buy products, to order pro products uh, or to fill some um, spreadsheets using just web and it's still working and it's, it's working pretty fine. Uh, that's why I, I told you about there, that there are two te technologies. So the first one is React Native, which allows you to write uh, apps uh, for Android and iOS. And the good thing is that if you have uh, already working app uh, uh, written in React.js, it's pretty easy to port the code uh, from React.js to, to React Native. And you can port your web app into your mobile app within a couple days and it, it will be working. And the second technology that's worth learning, if you are already some kind of front-end developer, you have skills of uh, front-end developer, it's uh, PWA, Progressive Web Apps. And that's something that's really worth learning and really worth understanding. Uh, because at some point, and for some cases, of course, uh, they might be even better than mobile apps. At least uh, they allow you to just turn your existing web app into some kind of mobile app uh, also within a couple days and you're still able to deliver push non notifications to cache things and work uh, without any connection to to the network you know uh, if you are working as a freelancer or working in a startup you have to think more about the business side of the app not only uh, the, the fancy time spent working and poli on polishing your, your native app. Oh, that's, that's a lot of stuff uh, I, I just put here. And yeah, uh, these are my thoughts for upcoming year. Uh, so if you are working in a medium or a big company, you can stick to native de development and just become better native developer there is and there will be a shortage of native dev developers uh, probably for a long time since now. Uh, but if you're an indie developer, you're working as a freelancer uh, or starting a startup or working in a startup, uh, I honestly believe that it's worth to learn something new. Uh, uh, either it will be a, some backend development, serverless is great. You can learn that during a one weekend and it will be working really trust me um, or you can just uh, 
pivot a little bit into a, a front-end de de development or multi-platform development. So multi-platform development using, uh, for example, Flutter or front-end development. You can start with uh, learning basics of JavaScript and then React Native. And if you like it, then you can also switch uh, into React.js or Angular or any other front-end fra framework. And yeah, that's, that's all I, I, I wanted to share. So in a shortcut, my thoughts that are that if you are not working in a big company, it's worth to learn something new in upcoming year and all upcoming years, probably. Um, you can focus on backend or a frontend. It's up to you, but it's really worth to learn new things to have a better perspective and be worth more on the job market. Okay, thank you for your time spent uh, on watching me and this video. Uh, and I wish you a happy new year and see you next time. Bye.